so let's begin guys i have obviously got this on record so for anybody that's not able to kind of dial in or for anybody that's kind of joining late whether that be because the children do not want to go down at seven because typically they know that you've probably got something that you want to do this evening um we'll kind of get started so i just mentioned a moment ago i'm going to be doing a q a at the end um, so please kind of leave any questions there's the chat bot that you can kind of put your questions into and i'll answer them at the end for you the webinar is recorded so you will in the next day or two get a copy of this sent to your email address um, with the recording and with kind of the slide deck and any other kind of information that you might have requested at the end if you have a mobile phone and you're not using it to watch this this evening please just either put it on silent or just kind of away from however you're watching um, this evening because it can sometimes cause interference and feedback and the last thing i'd want you guys to do is not be able to hear kind of what we're talking about this evening so happy monday evening to you all um, thank you ever so much for joining in this evening. I know Monday evenings are not always the best evening for everybody. I know Mondays are probably the worst day for me. I'm never full of beans and life and I'm just trying to recover from two days back to back with my amazing boys, but we'll kind of talk more about them in a little bit. So as you all know, because you've signed up for this evening, um, my name is Simone Thomas. I'm the owner of Simone Thomas Wellness, and another side um, of another company I have is Simone Thomas Salons. And this evening, I'm gonna be talking to you about balancing businesses with parenthood. Um, ah, okay, so this might be for the first problem. Let me just see, there we go. So we're able to get through the slide deck. I am obviously gonna be talking about balancing parenthood, but I have had a couple of people message me say, can I still you know, join the webinar this evening? I'm not a parent, but obviously it's something that I would like to be you know, later on in life, but I've got some ideas for business. So this isn't just for people that have children at home, um, but obviously I'm kind of talking about what I've done over the years, um, who I am and how I'm able to kind of juggle everything that I do. So I'm really going to kind of talk to you for about the next half an hour, uh, 40 minutes max. I'll try not to go on any longer than that because I know you've all got busy lives and things to do and we'll have the Q&A at the end. Um, but what we're going to kind of talk about this evening is how to achieve um, healthy balance in your life um, from business or with the company that you work for as an employee, um, also family, friends and how you can kind of look after yourself as well day to day when we've all got constant strains we're always wanted 24 7 nowadays 365 days a year due to social media and our amazing mobile devices that means we can never get any sleep or any chance to switch off um, how to kickstart a business idea especially as a parent how you're able to kind of allocate time and what it is that's kind of worked for myself um, tips on returning back to work as a new parent something I'll touch on a little bit later I rushed back to work too soon after my first son Ashton after winning a huge award which did kind of bite me in the bottom but I will talk about that a little bit later like I said earlier we're going to have a live Q&A at the end so do keep your questions coming and I look forward to kind of answering them at the end there is a Facebook group that I would love for you guys all to follow, which is called Simone Thomas Wellness World. And at the end of this webinar, we've got some very exciting news with a competition, um, but a lot of it will be sent to you via email. But again, if you're able to follow Simone Thomas Wellness World on Facebook, you'll be able to kind of share that with family and friends. So guys, let's get going this evening. So my name is Simone Thomas, sometimes called Simon Thomas when people don't realize the difference between Simon and Simone. Does it infuriate me? Yes, it does. Um, but anyway, as I said, my name is Simone Thomas. I have been known for the last eight to 10 years as a hair loss specialist, a hair loss consultant, and the owner of Simone Thomas Salons. I have worked in trichology as a trichologist and a trichology student over the years and my journey with that started 10 years ago at the Institute of Trichologists near Clapham and then I went on to do further trichology courses and still continue now as well to do various hair loss and scalp courses as well. 
I have off the back of what I've learned over the years decided um, with the connection of what I see day to day with clients and also through personal experience, went and educated myself in nutrition and did an online nutrition diploma, um, as well as last year coming across something called bioenergetics, which I will touch on a little bit later. But again, I would need another hour to even talk to you about trichology and bioenergetics. But it's kind of what I do day to day. It's what we do within my salons. And it's also what has led me to now having my award winning Simone Thomas Wellness supplement brand. I'm an award-winning entrepreneur. I've won a number of awards uh, for entrepreneurial skills. Most recent one this year, I won Female Business Entrepreneur. And in 2015, I won Entrepreneur of Great Britain, which was absolutely amazing. And it's something that I don't forget about every month um, just because of what it's kind of done for me um, as a business owner and as an individual. I'm also a long-term hair loss warrior. Um, and also suffered with various medical conditions as well as family members and my children as well which has kind of led me on to what I do most days all day every day. Um, I'm going to kind of talk to you about my different roles and passion for what I do. I'll talk about my background as well, um, my awards, my achievements, my journey with health and hair loss throughout kind of the slides. Um, for some of you, this won't necessarily resonate because you might not have had um, illnesses um, or kind of had things that I've had to battle with. But I can promise you along the way of setting up a business or having a, you know, a very busy family life, there is always something that is sometimes out of our control. And it's just how we kind of manage that day to day and how we're able to kind of achieve what it is that we want to achieve in life. So, okay. The big why, why do I do what I do now? And what did I do before I do what I do now? So in my twenties, I worked for a very large American company all to do with voice data and IP um, and also part-time modeling. Um, within my twenties, some of you may already know that have kind of followed my journey um, and kind of know a little bit more about me. I suffered with hair loss due to a couple of medical complications. I was diagnosed with quite severe cervical cells and off the back of being treated I ended up with numerous infections. Um, I became very anemic. I lost a lot of weight. Um, I'm five foot eleven so very very tall for, for a female um, but I dropped to kind of a size 23 genes so that's probably not even a size six. So for my frame and my height um, you know that was very very um, underweight it stemmed from lack of b12 my stomach wasn't functioning properly i was constantly on antibiotic antibiotic sorry and all of this had a knock-on effect with the food that i was eating and the way that my body was kind of able to absorb nutrients and unfortunately a side effect of that and kind of a long-term side effect for quite a few years was excessive hair loss as well as loss of brows you can't really see it in the picture here but my brows are tattooed on yes i do now have hair but they're not full eyebrows as as most people would kind of know i also lost my lashes but i'm lucky now that they have grown back in my 20s and kind of really sort of 30, 31, I was wearing forms of hair systems, whether it be full wigs, um, hair extensions, and it really had a big knock on my kind of um, confidence. And if I'm really honest, it still does knock my confidence now because it's always a worry. Even though I've become an expert in my field, naturally it still worries me because I know in life not everything is forever. Um, I do enjoy wearing wigs. I still wear them now, you know, for fun or to, if I want to have a different look or want to try a different color. And yes, I still wear hair extensions as well day to day if I want to and, and stuff as well. So really kind of what I've gone through in my 20s um, really kind of fueled my passion and understanding about hair um, just because of the time of kind of self research, research. Um, and also with other complications I had, you know, like I said earlier, with the 
cervical cells, issues with B12. And then in my 30s, I was diagnosed with endometriosis. So I learned a lot through my own kind of health um, and wellness that kind of um, led me onto what I do now. So in 2012, I opened my first hair salon and hair loss clinic which at the time was called MOI, which standard for makeup, wigs and hair. And the idea came um, in 2011. I had lost my mum a few years previously um, to something called motor neurons disease. If I say to you Stephen Hawkins and the illness that he, you know, he unfortunately had, that was the same illness that my mum suffered from. So I moved to Bournemouth and after living in Berkshire, working in a corporate environment, just to really kind of spend time with my brother. Um, who had had a new family and it was in that time over the six months that I had kind of decided I wanted to do something different. I had kind of looked at experiences of my mother not being very well, myself not being very well and I wanted to start to do something that was going to make a difference and this is where moi was born, Makeup Wigs and Hell. So in 2012, the spring of 2012, we opened, or should I say I opened with my staff, and it was a very, very small um, salon, to be honest. The shell of the building looked massive, but once I kind of got all the furniture into it and everything else, it was a lot smaller, and I soon realised um, that I was going to need a much bigger premise. So within opening within a couple of months, we you know, had very busy columns. We were helping men, women, children, and transgender people with various issues with hair loss, hair systems, hair extensions, and hair makeovers. Um, this really fueled my kind of passion. I was contacted by the local NHS trust um, to see if there was anything that I could kind of do with them to kind of help people that were suffering with forms of alopecia um, and cancer. And that's where kind of my love um, and training for trichology started um, and kind of span over the last kind of seven or eight years. And then kind of after I was settled into that role, I then realized the connection day to day with people that I was seeing within the clinic, the connection of kind of nutrition and our lifestyle and how it plays a huge part on our hair, our body, our skin, and just general kind of wellness. After three years, um, as I said a moment ago, I realized where we were was too small. There was no way that I was able to service the kind of thousands of clients that we had built up over those couple of years. So Simone Thomas was born. Um, because I worked with the NHS and was very fortunate to kind of get a contract with them, I realized that moi wasn't necessarily the name that would be correct moving forward in the medical field. But also I had bought and got, should I say not bought, I had basically earned um, a big name and a big reputation with the awards that I had won. Um, and a lot of people down on the South Coast kind of knew of myself because of awards, because of articles that I had written. And I wanted to become the hair loss expert in the UK that was able to treat, diagnose hair loss conditions, scalp conditions, um, issues that people might have through diet and lifestyle that was kind of causing these things. So that's where Simone Thomas Salons came. Um, as you can see in this picture here, this was a few years ago with our Christmas decorations outside. Um, it's been a huge success, this building. It's a two-story building, um, 22 members of staff, um, yeah, and it's been an amazing three years in, in, in this kind of location. Um, kind of the things that I've um, learnt through opening a very smaller place to kind of where I am now, um, I didn't kind of plan for the difference. I was working in a, you know, in a three chair salon prior to the one that you can see here on this slide deck. And I was able to work every day. And what I mean there is I was physically able to treat people, whether it was trichology, scalp conditions and hair replacement systems. The minute I went into a bigger premise, I realized that I had to split my time 50-50. There was no way that I was able to manage 22 members of staff, whether that be from a hate HR point of view, payroll, customer services, management of their time, their columns, and obviously attracting new clients, marketing and PR and everything that kind of went with it. So I had to kind of split myself 50-50. 
So 50% of it, as I would say, was working in the business. So working with clients and the other 50% was working on the business. And this is what I believe has kind of helped me get to where I am today because I was able to kind of take a step back and really kind of allocate my diary, um, my plans of how I was going to kind of move forward, um, you know, with the business and what it is that I wanted to do. And one of the things that I remember watching in 2015, which was just before we moved to the, to the new location, and it's something that you can look on YouTube, but basically there was a Navy SEAL, um, an admiral, um, and he basically shares about their training, obviously very, very high up as an admiral, but no matter what level or what status they are, you know, whether it be a Navy officer or Marine, um, they have to make their bed every day, as I'm sure you're all aware, or, you know, have their boots polished and their uniform has to be a certain way. And I came from an RAF and Navy background schooling. And he talks about in this very short clip, about the reason to make your bed every day. And this is one of the things that if you work for somebody currently at the moment, and you've obviously got an idea for a business, or you do have your own business, but sometimes you're getting a little bit lost working from home. You sometimes, you know, it's two o'clock in the afternoon and you're still in your pajamas because you've got that more kind of laid back environment because you're working from home. And one thing I will say, and one thing that I do do, no matter how I'm feeling, is I make my bed every day. It's actually one of the first things that I do do after having a shower because I like the bed to air. And it's one of the things that this guy touches on on YouTube. And it's basically is saying that if you take pride in the first task that you do every day, which in his case is making the bed, you will take pride in everything else you do throughout the day. And the one thing that kind of makes a lot of people laugh on this little clip is that he would say that, you know, in life, it's the little things that matter. And it's the same in business. It's the little things that matter when it comes to businesses. And if you cannot do those little things right, you're not going to be able to achieve the big things. And like he said at the end of this video, if your day has been an awful day, which we all do in business or in life personally, at least you're going home to the best bed that's been made by yourself. So at least you've achieved one thing in that day. And what I'm trying to say is, is basically when you're thinking about having a business or you have a business is to get dressed, to show up and to work hard, even if it is a home business. I've worked from home before and I have worked in my pajamas till 2 p you know, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and I don't feel as motivated as I do of getting up, putting my lip gloss on, putting a nice outfit on, whether it's a nice shirt and jeans or a top or a dress, I actually feel ready for my day. So one of the key important things about any form of business, no matter how big or small, if it's a home business, home office, or something that you're looking to do, is to basically get dressed and to show up every day. So hopefully I haven't bored you <laughs> along the way. So Simone Thomas Wellness, as I said earlier, you know, my background with health um, has kind of led me to where I am today. I'm very, very passionate about what I do. I'm very passionate about my business, my staff and my clients. Um, things that I have learned over the years through personal experience of my own health, my mother having motor neurons disease, but also both my boys um, having various health issues when they were born. Ashton, my eldest, um, believe it or not, was allergic to breast milk, which I didn't even believe was possible, and also had an, air, um, an issue with dairy, which led him to have very severe skin conditions and very upset stomach, which then kind of caused a lot of sleepless nights, hospital appointments, and a lot of research from my side. And then if that wasn't enough, my son William, when he, he was born, nearly died at a few weeks old. And that was absolutely horrific. And again, with what he had, it kind of destroyed his stomach, his gut and brain connection, which I'm not going to kind of go into too much now. But he had a lot of pain, a lot of issues with food, very, very unwell little boy. Um, and I'm very lucky to say now that kind of nearly three years on, he's doing absolutely amazing. But between the three of us and obviously the boy's father, 
who has been unwell with a brain tumor. Some of you are aware because I've talked about it before. I've had to kind of treat the whole family as I do my brother and his partner and his children and all my kind of staff and friends and clients. And that is where Simone Telmus wellness really came from. It was from personal experience over the last 10 years, but more really with what's kind of happened the last six years um, with those that, you know, obviously I love and are very, you know, close to my heart. Um, and that's where Simone Thomas Wellness came from. Um, it kind of stuff, you know, covers trichology, nutrition, bioenergetics. I did open a second salon in Wokingham three years ago. And guys, this is why we're kind of, I'm doing this this evening about balancing business and parenthood. I opened Wokingham three years ago while pregnant with William. I had a lot of compli um, complications whilst pregnant and I actually made the decision this year and it wasn't an easy decision to make to actually close Wokingham and there's nothing wrong in trying um, when it comes to you know launching your own business or trying to achieve something because I'm a huge believer it's better to have regrets over something that you have tried instead of having regrets over something that you haven't tried because you've been too scared to try so Wokingham did open some years ago but I made the decision at the back end um, kind of this summer um, literally a few months ago to close Wokingham so I could move forward with new plans and some very very exciting plans that we have for Simone Thomas brand and Simone Thomas wellness so don't be afraid guys if you have a business or you've just closed a business and you're feeling a little bit lost um, trust me we've all been there um, we never get it right straight away from day one and we all make mistakes but they're mistakes that will teach us to go on to do bigger and better things um, so yes it was a very stressful time for myself but I have learned a lot and it's allowed me now to kind of spend more time with with Simone Thomas wellness and, and everything else that I'm kind of doing so kind of moving forward so how do I balance my business life with my family life um, I'm very, very fortunate to have two boys. I mentioned earlier that I suffer with endometriosis and that I was told I would never have children, as well as their father has also had health issues with a brain tumor. So between the two of us, we were literally a no-go uh, from the doctors, but miracles do happen. And I now have Ashton who is nearly four and William that is nearly three. Um, again, I don't have a huge support network. Um, you know, my brother has his own family. Um, and apart from that, you know, my mother passed away, which I touched upon earlier, as did my father in my younger years. So how have I managed to kind of do what I do? Um, it's not easy. I'm not going to lie, but it is all about priorities. I absolutely love notepads and pens. It's an addiction I've had since I was younger. And something that's really helped me is learning to write whether it's um to do lists at night having a nighttime routine and just really kind of making a plan the only day that i don't make a plan is a sunday that is my day that i kind of switch off from the world whether it be mobile phone notifications that is my downtime that i'm literally not a business owner unless there's a disaster of a break-in or a fire or, or I'm critically needed but that is Simone Thomas day and that tends to be staying at home spending time with the boys cooking baking preparing things for the week and just kind of doing some nice arty crafty things and stuff as well so as I said earlier I won entrepreneur of the year some some years ago and what had actually happened was I was up for entrepreneur of the year for Great Britain I was due to have Ashton within those couple of weeks of the actual award ceremony and my witchy sixth sense as my friends like to call it kicked in and I had a feeling that I was going to go into labor at the awards so I didn't actually attend the awards I had other people that went for me and lo and behold I actually won the award and then five hours later guess who was in hospital going into labor it was myself <laughs> so I'm very very lucky that I did stay at home and I was able to have the birth that I wanted to have but what kind of happened and this is kind of going to lead me to the next slide all about maintaining your well-being is that night I won the award by the next afternoon at 3.47, Ashton had arrived. Um, but obviously I had just won this massive award as Entrepreneur of Great Britain, which was huge for somebody that had only been in business for the last three to four years. I went straight back to work three days later 
and I will touch upon what kind of happened in a little bit but it was not the best thing for me to do because I became very, very ill from it. And that is where I have learned about balance, whether it's business, friendships, family, and um, for myself. And I always kind of say to friends and to clients, it's not a bad thing to be selfish, guys. You tend to find, for any of you that are busy mums or busy fathers that are on this um, webinar this evening, we're very good at giving the advice to our loved ones and taking care of our loved ones. But it's very rare that we take, you know, care of ourselves first and people always say well that's quite selfish Simone it's not and the way I look at it is if you can't give yourself a hundred percent and look after yourself first how are you going to look after everybody else around you um, yes I feel tired day to day I always find typically if I've got a big event on whether it's an awards or a presentation or a big clinic day my boys seem to know that mummy has got a busy day tomorrow and she's up at five so we're going to wake up at 2 a.m and climb into mummy's bed or we're not going to go to sleep till eight o'clock tonight um, it always happens but it always is a way of kind of juggling um, business and children um, and kind of also looking after yourself as well with you know the right kind of foods supplements time out for yourself exercise drinking water and just kind of being mindful that you're able to kind of take you know a few seconds to yourself and kind of breathe something which a lot of us don't do um, especially when we're busy parents you know we're constantly on the go whether it's the dishwasher in the morning the school run sports in the afternoon activity school clubs ironing washing you know the day goes very very quickly and then you're obviously having to show up to work five to seven days a week depending on, on what it is that you do um, I am incredibly organized now. I didn't always used to be, but like I said earlier, I'm a huge lover for notepads, um, for writing my routine. And yes, they, I do have bad days. Um, literally, I think last week I was meant to film a mini video about this evening um, and jump onto an Instagram live, but I really was absolutely shattered. Um, my boys weren't sleeping. We didn't have the best couple of days and I really just didn't feel like Simone Thomas wellness whatsoever and I didn't feel like jumping onto Instagram or social media to kind of tell everybody you know about this evening so we all do have bad days whether we are parents or not parents trying to set up a business or running a business it's perfectly normal um, and none of us are to feel bad that you know that we have bad days you know because it is it's very very normal that that kind of happens because it happens to all of us Sorry, the couple of sides, there we go. I went back and now we're going forward. So as I said, you know, I feel exhausted, but who is, who is it that I look after? So with everything that I do, you know, a lot of the time, the people that I see, the clients, they're exhausted. They're looking after partners, children. Sometimes they're even looking after their own parents who are now poorly. Um, and it is all about creating balance and helping them, you know, either build a business, their own career, um, or helping them with their day-to-day -day lives with family and their jobs and things that they want to kind of, you know, achieve and stuff as well. I help them as I help myself with kind of the health and fitness um, and it's really really key and I always kind of say to people you know don't do too much you know you can only do so much and we know we're coming into Christmas now and I guarantee loads of people will sign up to the gym in January by March they won't even have bothered turning up and we put ourselves under so much pressure to do so much that you've just got to take a step back and kind of work on a three month plan even if it's only one thing that you want to achieve in those three months you would have achieved it with a hundred percent time and effort compared to trying to do five or six things whilst not getting ill not having your immune system weakened um, sleepless nights not enough sleep not eating the right foods or drinking the right kind of drinks um, I get burnt out if I do a lot of traveling or if I have a very, very busy clinic day and literally I have had no gaps booked in. I can guarantee by five, six o'clock, 
I am getting my words back to front. I can't think, I can't talk to clients, literally all forms of any medical words or explanations completely go out the window. And obviously I'm there telling them about balance and how to look after their well-being. And then I've typically just had a day back to, you know, back to back because unfortunately it was kind of booked that way or there's been a mistake. So it is all about balance guys um, and I'll kind of you know talk about this all the time and it really is about being selfish and, and having balance and how you're kind of able to maintain things and, and stuff as well so day to day I work really seven days a week um I'm just not necessarily in the salons or online for you know Simone Thomas Wellness and something that I do do um, Sundays, I will be honest, it's not a day that I get up this early. That's kind of a little bit of me time if I'm able to get it and have a little bit more of a longer sleep till at least seven or half seven. But I start my day at 6 a.m. in the morning. <clears throat> and what I hope this does for myself, and again, it's not always the way I used to get very frustrated um, in the past if Ashton had woken up because he heard me and in the end i realized i was coming like the grinch and you know sort of saying to him ashton like go back up to bed mummy's trying to do some stuff and then he was then kind of saying that back to me and i realized actually you know what if he wants to get up because he hears me then i should enjoy that quality time with him before william wakes up and not be so kind of hard on myself but i like to get up early at least an hour before the house if i'm able to for me time when I say me time, this isn't for me to be on my mobile phone. It's not necessarily for me to even be on emails. Um, the great things about mobile phones now is you can turn alerts off. So from 7 p.m. till 7 a.m. in the morning, my phone automatically has all alerts off, which allows me to have me time. It allows me to have time to concentrate on things I wanna concentrate on. So my family, food for myself, a nice dinner, business plan, writing notes. Um, I still write a diary um, about things that have happened, whether they be good or bad. Um, it all kind of links to how I kind of look at things for the future and current in regards to mood boards. Um, and I like to get up and just sit in, in peace and quiet if I can. And I'll always start my day with hot water and lemon just to really kind of help flush out my kidneys and my liver and kind of flush out any toxins. And then naturally, guys, I obviously like to take my supplements and I would either mix them with my water or my protein shake. And I just know I'm ready for the day. My mind's alert. I kind of put in what I need to do. And with a business and being a mum, obviously stress is always going to be around us 24 7 a day it's, you know no matter what it is it's sometimes external stresses but i know by kind of exercising having great breakfast and kind of fueling my body that i'm mentally and kind of physically repaired for anything that can kind of go wrong that day um i'm a huge believer um you are what you eat you know nowadays you know you only have to read about the connection about diets, lifestyle, food, cancers, illnesses, um, depression. A lot of it is linked to things to do with gut health, to do with chemicals, to do with the types of food that we're eating. Um, and I would always kind of say to people, you know, if you are busy being a parent or you're a new parent and you're trying to, you know, run a business and, you know, it's very, very hard. You know, you've got the baby to look after. You're trying to, you know, operate and get back to people, whether it be on Instagram and social media and emails, but take a hundred, hundred percent responsibility for your food because it's your food that will give you the energy and make you thrive, make you feel happy, um, make your brain more alert, you know, keep your immune system kind of always topped up um, and there's so many different diets out there um, for myself anti-inflammatory diet I'm a huge believer in um, and kind of Mediterranean diet it helps me with my endometriosis it gives me the vitamins and the minerals that I need day to day and it's also something that I've seen for the last seven years with everything that I do day to day with clients of what works best and what we've had great results with um, Obviously, we're talking today about parenthood and balancing business, but if you're not looking after yourself, 
it's like a building block. You know, there's no point in, you know, spending all this time in building a business if you're going to eat bad food. You know, you need to fuel your body with the right kind of substance, the vitamins and the minerals. Um, there's so many diets out there now. I'm not going to kind of cover what I feel is the best diet because all of us have different beliefs. Um, we all have different backgrounds, different lifestyles, um, and we all have different bodies. You know, what would benefit somebody wouldn't necessarily benefit myself. But for my Myself, I love the Mediterranean diet, anti-inflammatory, and I really feel it works really well for me and it gives me the energy and the buzz that I need. Staff that work for me and people that um, I meet along the way um, always kind of expect me to be quite big, I suppose, just because the amount of food that I eat. Um, I'll have two breakfasts in the morning. You'll always see me having lunch and an afternoon snack and evening. Um, and it works well for me. I'm not unhealthy. I'm very, very, you know, I'm very, very healthy, in fact. But it works for me because it's the right kind of food that I'm eating that fuels my body. And it gives me enough energy for kind of the 14, 15 hours that I kind of do day to day, which allows me to look after staff, look after family, loved ones, and friends and stuff as well. So, day to day, Apart from taking care of absolutely everybody else, you know, whether it be staff and clients, how do I kind of recharge and look after myself? And this is what's really important, guys, when you are looking after little ones, whether you're looking after family members that maybe are unwell or a loved one, um, or you're working in a nine to five job and you're trying to set up your own company at home. Um, it's kind of time out for you and I always say to people when they come in to see me you know let's make some changes let's incorporate a bit of exercise and they are like well I haven't got time to even peace mode so how am I going to do this um, you know and I'm a believer that we've all got 24 hours a day we all have all have seven days a week in our lives and it really is how you choose to spend them so the amount of hours that are wasted on social media the amount of hours that are spent watching TV and guys I do watch TV I know it says there that I don't but I do but I'm um, selective of what I watch I don't watch rubbish TV um, yes I do watch series some of you might know a series called power absolutely loved it and it was my kind of switch off time but gone are the days for me now where I would sit and have a whole Sunday just continuously watching TV unless I was very very unwell on the sofa which touch wood hasn't happened for a very long time by the time my boys go to bed, that's me time. That's time for me to cook myself a really nice dinner, have a look at what I've got kind of going on the next day and prepare and kind of get it set up. Like I said earlier, my phone goes on silent at seven till seven. That means I cannot get disturbed. Um, and then I kind of spend time with myself. I spend time with my boys. This evening, I'm obviously not putting them to bed because I'm not there, um, but I like to put them to bed, read them a story and kind of have that time with them till seven o'clock and then it's kind of my time. The world is not gonna end if you have your phone off. And I've seen people recently on social media saying, oh, I'm gonna turn my alerts off for 48 hours. Will I survive? The world is not going to end. Your lives are not going to end. And one thing that I have done is I've turned all text messages off on my phone continuously. I don't have them alert me at all now. I do have WhatsApp and emails, but all social media alerts because of the hundreds that come through on a day-to-day -day basis, I have now turned them off and I'm just mindful to kind of check them every 45 minutes to an hour when I'm ready and it's kind of convenient for myself. So kind of think about you know the time that you spend on things now and make some adjustments whether it's kind of writing a list like a 30 60 90 day list i talked about earlier and kind of see you know what it is that you do day to day a bit like a food diary that i ask people to do kind of write a typical day diary over the next three to five days and you'll actually be surprised of how much time you spend on social media or you know, an email that's come through of sale and buy this now. Um, and for me, if you're starting out in business, you know, these are vital hours um, that you could kind of be spending on things that you want to learn or businesses that you want to kind of, you know, open and stuff as well. So as I said earlier, weekends for me um, are all about family. Some of you might not have family. And if you don't, 
use that time if you're thinking about setting up a business to research to learn watch as many youtube videos log into as many webinars attend as many free seminars nowadays we live in a world that so much stuff is given to us for free because of technology um, through youtube google and the internet so if you haven't got a family right now and it's obviously you're looking into creating a business use the time wisely you know don't spend the hours sat on the sofa on social media and obviously if you do have a family i know it's very hard to have a perfect routine because children aren't about routine and children are to be enjoyed and to have fun um, but kind of make yourself a routine for the evenings for when obviously they have gone to bed or you have a bit more flexibility and, and stuff as well my sunday is my complete switch off day that day is for me that is the day that i do not show up to work i do not put on clothes that make me feel empowered or powerful or entrepreneurial or kind of give me that extra vavavoom that i would have let's say within my working week sundays for me are my comfies unless i'm going out um, and if we do go out it tends to be the surf cafe so then i try to look a bit more like a surfer chick without the surfboard in this picture um, but it's all about listening to kind of my body and what that I feel kind of you know works for myself and stuff as well so with a business um, you can't have a business without clients and for some businesses you obviously need staff um, and it's a huge learning curve when you're balancing businesses or you're looking to set up business it's a huge unknown from hr payroll customer services um, customer service process from the minute somebody walks into a business to the minute they leave you know there is so much to kind of think about um, and for me um, my staff are very very important their family um, I always call them the STS crew um, I will do videos social media posts when it's their birthday serenade them and this just comes from kind of environments that I have worked in and not necessarily always being treated the, with the respect and love and care that you would expect but sometimes that does happen in huge large corporations you're more of a number than you are family and for me with what I do day to day within the business our clients wouldn't feel comfortable if the staff weren't comfortable and it doesn't matter how much money you can spend on advertising and marketing if staff aren't happy clients aren't going to be happy because it's the clients that buy into staff and then buy into kind of the brand in the business and i'm very very lucky that i have got an amazing team it has taken me a long time to kind of get the, the team that I have now, but it was always learning curves from the beginning um, and kind of how I spend my time with them. Um, I've got a fantastic manager within the salon and she kind of looks the weeks ahead of how they plan their time. She helps me plan my time, um, which obviously allows me to be efficient and able to kind of work on the businesses, work on myself, work on family life and kind of, you know, look to move forward as I do every year with new ideas and expansion and stuff as well, um, which is, you know, absolutely amazing. So I talked earlier about kind of notepads, to-do lists. Um, and one thing that I absolutely love doing, it doesn't have to be in print form as you see here, is I love having goals. I love having mood boards, um, whether that be for good things or for bad things. I tend to write in my diary that I touched upon earlier um, about things that I don't necessarily want to reoccur in my life and i also write things that i would like to attract um, but one thing that kind of um is a quote from princess diana um, and again you can kind of look at this online and it kind of she kind of said it's all about live your truth and only do what your heart tells you to do and that's very very true a lot of us are here doing things that we don't necessarily want to do or as in the middle of this of this um, image here calling you know we're all sometimes doing things that we don't want to do and it's all about having a plan um, and kind of making that plan you know either turn into your future or it might be something that you're doing now but you want to obviously enhance it 
and it to either kind of grow and for you to kind of move forward with your business. So for me, different areas that I've always worked on, on kind of vision boards, whether it's um, kind of cut out of a magazine at Christmas and New Year, and it's something that I absolutely love doing with a mold wine, or even on my phone, I have an album, which is all about visions and mood boards. And for me, these are the kind of areas that work for me. Um, and this is kind of why I kind of work on them. So love, um, I touched upon it earlier, you know, you need to look after yourself and it's not selfish to love yourself first, look after yourself because then you can look after others. Relationship is really key, whether that's with staff, with loved ones, with family and with friends. Health and wellness are key for anybody that has a business or for anybody that's a parent. You know, you need to look after yourself um, with your health and your wellness. Um, one thing I do put on my board, and not everybody always agrees with this, is wealth. Um, there's no point in my mind in owning business if you're going to say, no, I'm not doing it for the money. Obviously, you would not invest seven days a week, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, sleepless nights, taking the phone calls when things go wrong if you didn't want it to turn into something amazing. And I don't mean multi-million pound company or, or global, but everybody wants to achieve something. And obviously with that, you know, comes happiness and comes wealth to support others, to change other people's lives, whether that's working with charities, um, from the homeless to children, um, to helping with hospitals and hospices, etc. So that's one area that I do have. And it's not just because of personal wealth, it's because of all the other things that I give back. And without kind of having that as a goal, I wouldn't be able to kind of help the companies that I work with and help and donate. Have a purpose. Always have a purpose with your business um, and have a purpose for your life. You're not just a mum, you're not just a dad, you know, you are who you are, you know, and there's so many parts of us as an individual. So don't forget your purpose because many of us, the minute we have children, we change and our purpose just becomes our children, which yes, it should be, but you are more than just a parent. There's so much more to us as human beings. I love to look at being born and growth every year about what I want to do for myself personally and how I want to kind of recharge myself and where I want to go forward and what kind of drives me really with everything that I do is fear um, uh, fear from my childhood um, and I kind of say at this bottom slide there was a book that I read called rules of life and these are definitely my fears and what would kind of sum me up. So no fear, no surprise, no hesitation and no doubt. So I always say to staff, don't lie to me and don't steal from me. So no surprise, no hesitation. And it's not nice to have any doubt. But my fear and what has kind of driven me is, as I said earlier, loss of family. I lost my father when I was younger. And then obviously I lost my mum in my late 20s. And our life changed when our father passed away, as did kind of life change when my mother passed away because I really had nobody. Um, and my brother, being a man, doesn't necessarily have the female empathy and love that sometimes somebody at my age needed at that time. Um, and it's something I still struggle with now. Um, you know, it, it's horrible to lose one family member, let alone to lose two. So fear. Um, and loss is definitely something that has driven me and drives me every day. One, because obviously of my two boys, you know, I've got two very young, amazing, special people that I need to look after. And I don't ever want them to ever be in a position that I've been in um, if I was to ever leave early and, and not be around till I'm 100 and annoying them. Um, so that's kind of what has really driven me. I love spending time with the right people. I have changed over the years from having so many friends and associates to kind of narrowing that down and just literally having a handful of really good people around me. You will find um, when you're setting up a business or you've started a new family, friends will change. You know, life is not always going to stay the same. And it can be very, very hard um, to start a business. You know, jealousy can creep in the way with friends. Some friends, if you go into business with them, can let you down or, you know, partners or whatever can let you down. Um, so, yeah, you've got to be, as my mum was used to call me, an armadillo. Very, very hard exterior. Um, but very, very soft on the inside. And, and it's very true. Um, 
in business, I'm very, very strong. Um, but sometimes when it comes to personal events or, or personal parties, I can sometimes resort to even kind of being like a scared young girl. Um, but that's kind of my two faces. But in business, um, definitely it has driven me um, with kind of what I have experienced. Um, and what I would kind of say for anybody that does suffer with fear or anxiety, or maybe you've been in an environment growing up or you've had a relationship or a family member that tells, you know, kind of tells you that you're not good enough or you didn't get the GCSE results that you were meant to or the A-levels or you didn't go to university, please do not listen to them. Um, have a plan, whatever it is that may be, if you have an idea, um, have a look at who your competition is. So as an example, I own hair salon, you know, and I absolutely love my business and we're most amazing hair salon, but I love to go to other salons around the world, no matter where I am, to experience a cut color blow dry, a blow dry surface, just for me to see what they're good at and what we're good at. Can I take ideas away? And it's the same when it comes to any business, don't get stuck thinking that you've got the best business, the best product, or even the best idea. Understand the market, have a plan. Um, your business plan doesn't need to be mind blowing guys. My idea for moi came at the races um, and literally had a discussion at the table, um, at the horse racing. And I just said, I've got this idea. And everybody basically said to me at the lunch, you can do it, Simone go and do it. And then that evening I registered the domain name, didn't have a business plan, didn't even have an account person, didn't even know about how to even set up my own limited company or anything, but it was an idea. And obviously I've learned over the years. So like I say, have a plan, understand your competition. What are they great at? What are they not great at? And what is it that you feel that you're going to be better at? And how are you going to kind of achieve that? seek advice whether it's through seminars webinars um, magazine articles books there's so many books now that you can read and get so many ideas from discuss it with family and friends that those ones that you can obviously trust and that you feel would be able to kind of come back to you with some really good questions and criticism and and kind of help you and stuff as well um, like I said, you know, with myself, when I set up all those years ago, I didn't have a clue about financial planning, but again, there's so many books now. So kind of just really go out there and seek advice and don't be scared to have an idea, no matter how big or how small and don't anyone or let anyone knock you down. I still get knocked down now, seven, eight years into the industry, into the hair industry. And I will tell you why. As I said earlier, my background was corporate voice data IP, and obviously I had done modeling. The amount of times I get you know, sort of criticized, and excuse me, I sometimes do suffer with a stutter, and there it goes, um, is I hear that Simone Thomas isn't a hairdresser, so why does she own a hair salon? Or I wouldn't have won an award, and the feedback has been because I haven't obviously have a hairdressing qualification. And I have always responded with that I am not going to let anybody say to me, I cannot do what I do. Um, I come from a business background and I've obviously achieved trichology and nutrition and everything is possible. And one of the people that I always like to look at in business is Richard Branson. He owns a very, very well brand um, of airplanes called Virgin. And as we all know, you do not see Richard Branson picking you up from Heathrow or Gatwick runway to take you on your holiday to Barbados. But what an amazing business that he has built. So you don't need to be a pilot um, to own an airline. Um, and you don't need, in my case, to be a hairdresser, to own hair salons, or to obviously go into what I have gone into. So guys, please don't ever let anybody put any doubt in your mind don't ever be scared to be hesitant and don't let hesitation kind of rule what it is that you want to do plan try not to have too many surprises and one thing I've learned fear is good but work with that fear 
Um, fear will make you stronger and there's nothing wrong in having fear no matter where that kind of comes from but there's a great book as I mentioned earlier called Rules of Life it's very very funny um, and it's all about no no fear no surprise no hesitation and no doubt so I hopefully none of you have dropped off asleep on a Monday um, and as I mentioned at the very beginning um, I had something to kind of share with you all at the end that I've kind of dialed in today into the webinar um, and it's one of the things that we're going to be kind of sharing on the Simone Thomas Wellness World Facebook platform and across other social media channels as well. Um, we have a number of prizes um, for the competition and um, basically we'll all we kind of ask everybody to do is certain actions to share like and comment um, there's amazing prizes to be won with the first prize I believe valued at just over 1300 pounds um, this is running for the next two weeks and in total I think we have 150 different prizes ranging from uh, supplement plans um, a signed copy of my book when it comes out next year, free consultations with myself, um, hair makeover packages, all the kind of details on the competition will be going live on social media this evening after the webinar. Um, but I would really appreciate it if you can kind of share the love, share the message, um, because webinars is something that I'm going to be kind of doing on a monthly basis. We do kind of do a poll at the end to ask people what it is that they would like me to talk about kind of in the next one. And then we try and cater it around all of that and stuff as well. Um, so hopefully, um, you're not all asleep um, and that you found kind of what I've talked about this evening quite useful um, and even if you're just able to take one bit of information away from what I've said this evening then to me that would kind of mean a lot because um, we all work differently we all have different ideas in business and parenthood and there's nothing worse than someone telling you oh you should really do this when they're crying or they should really get into a routine we all find our way um, but I'm here if anybody's got any any questions um, so I'll kind of open the Q&A chat box so by all means guys kind of ask away um, and as I said earlier this is going to be sent out um, via email afterwards to everybody that was able to kind of log in today um, and to everybody that wasn't kind of able to log in and kind of had other things that kind of came in the way um, but yeah just want to say thank you um, I hope you've enjoyed it I hope I have made some sense along the way um, and I hope you'll be able to kind of have that little bit of extra confidence if it was something that you were thinking about kind of launching your own business or how you're going to kind of have a business and, and child you know and children um, but like I say guys it's not easy but we can do it um, and just don't put yourself under pressure um, but yeah thank you and like I say I can answer any questions now on the Q&A so by all means please please ask okay let's have a look what's coming through okay so what do you find most challenging when running your own business um for me i would kind of say it's sometimes the unknown certain things can happen in events um obviously day to day we kind of know our diaries and things that are going on but like i say um on two parts one could be you know one of my children's taken on well in the night or he just didn't want to settle and it's kind of that disturbed sleep that then kind of makes you feel tired and unwell or sometimes um the other week is an example i had three or four members of staff off with horrendous flu and viruses and because of the kind of company that we are we have to kind of keep germs out from the clinic and and kind of the hair loss floor due to people that have got cancers and other illnesses so it is then all about kind of juggling um, and I've always kind of got plans in place day to day with where I'm meant to be and times for meetings and clients but things do happen they do sometimes completely destroy my plans um, and I've learned to kind of not get too stressed. Um, I tend to get the most stressed when I've booked in PT sessions and things have happened and I'm not able to have that time for me because that is my time to kind of recharge. But then the next day I completely kind of bounce back. Um, but I would say every day or every week and month, there's always sometimes different challenges. And half of the time, 
it's not something that we've got and cause it's just something that's sometimes happen externally um and it's the same with you know example in the hair salon we might get a complaint and then all of a sudden you get two but then you don't have any more for six months um, and naturally you know every company would get a complaint where someone you know in this instance would say oh my hair's not being cut correctly or i'm not happy with the color and i find we can have six months of absolutely nothing and then all of a sudden we get quite a few um like two or three and you just kind of think god where are these coming from um but yeah every kind of month there's always different challenges Okay, so what's been my most rewarding experience since launching my business? Okay, there's quite a few. Um, firstly, I would say probably expansion from kind of more days into Simone Thomas Salon days, because I did basically start with a whole new team um, at Simone Thomas Salons, just where the company had kind of grown and I had learned a lot. Um, staff were then employees on full contracts instead of kind of self employed staff, and, and I had to basically rebuild a new team. Um, that was very hard, but also very rewarding because I kind of moved into that new premise with winning Entrepreneur of Great Britain. I had just had my first baby, um, which was, you know, absolutely amazing and really started to feel that I'd kind of found my way um, and kind of got my feet settled in the industry and, and what it was that I was kind of um, looking to do. Um, and when I kind of look back, there's quite a few things um, from the team that I have, um, the loyal clients that we have, the fact that the business is built on reputation um, and how we've kind of grown over the years. Um, also for my own kind of personality, my own fears that I don't really take no for an answer when it comes to myself, talking to myself with ideas, um, whether that be obviously the Simone Thomas wellness brand. Um, yes, I do doubt myself at times and I think, how am I going to get to where it is that I want to get to? Um, but I keep striving no matter what kind of happens. Um, and yeah, it's kind of a constant building block. And I would kind of say I'm proud of a lot of things, um, but there's not one big thing that I would say is the most proudest because I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly building. Um, I have so many ideas and exciting things that I want to do next year and products that I want to launch and partnerships with um, department stores and other outlets um, that everything kind of seems to be an achievement no matter how big or small. Um, so hopefully that kind of answers that question. Um, okay, oh, I've just had a private one come through saying, am I going to be having any more children? No. I'm afraid not. <laughs> um, three would kill me. Um, two, I can just about manage. Um, and oddly enough, this is something I get asked quite a lot. Oh, when are you going to have a third? Because you seem to juggle the two. Um, well, no, for me, um, if I didn't work and I had all the money in the world, then yes, I would uh, be the lady in the shoe and have multiple children. Um, but no, I can definitely just about manage my life and my children's life by just having the two. So definitely not going to be having any more. I might um, get a dog um, in the next year or two, but definitely no more children. That's for sure. <laughs> Where, okay, so another one that's come through is um, Simone Thomas Wellness. Okay, the details on that. So on the webinar, we'll kind of send you the links to the website. Um, but for that side of the company, it's obviously simonethomaswellness.com, which is obviously to do with the supplements and the products. And this is where the webinar will kind of be sent out from and stuff as well. Um, and yes, it is available online. It is available in Simone Thomas salons. And next year, we've got some exciting news with some very well-known department stores, high street stores that will be launching with Simone Thomas wellness products and hopefully the new products that we're going to bring out as well in 2020. I think I've had a few emails come through, but that's stuff to do that they've asked me to kind of come back to them after. 
Um, so guys, I just want to say thank you if there's not any more kind of questions direct to the whole group. Um, I hope you all have a lovely Monday evening and I hope I haven't kind of taken up too much of your time. I've tried to keep it to, to the hour. Um, but if any of you have any questions or anything that you want to kind of run by me, I have kind of helped people in the past with ideas for setting up businesses. And it's something I had to do as part of one of the award wins of Entrepreneur of the Year was kind of helping another company a year later. Um, so like I say, you can contact me on social media, Simone Thomas Wellness World on Facebook. Obviously, you have the Instagram, Simone Thomas Wellness. And like I say, after this evening, we are launching the amazing competition, which is going to run for the next two weeks um, with the first prize valued at just over £1,300. And there's 150 prizes in total. Please share, please like, please comment, um, share the Simone Thomas Wellness love. Um, and obviously, I look forward to kind of hearing from you all and then look forward to you guys. Probably the next webinar will probably be January, um, kind of talking about the new year and how to kind of kickstart. But we'll kind of see what you guys fancy and, and do a toll online or social media. Um, but happy Monday evening, guys. And thank you ever so much for this evening. Take care.